Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. You are listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. We want to get right back to the tech earnings story. Microsoft and Google Parent Alphabet are both on the rise this morning, delivering results for both companies that suggest investments in artificial intelligence and cloud computing are paying off. Now, for more on these results, we're really pleased to be joined by Gene Munster, Managing Partner at Deepwater Asset Management, and Dan Ives in our studio this morning, the Interactive Broker Studio, Senior Equity Research Analyst at Wedbush Securities for a roundtable discussion on these results. It's great to have both of you back on with us this morning. Uh, Gene, I'll start off with you. Is the AI narrative back on track now? Uh, absolutely. I think the only off track was what happened with interest rates, and I think it kind of spooked some tech investors. But this is uh, a pretty unique dynamic we're seeing, not only in terms of the demand side, whether it's NVIDIA or AMD, their uh, just breathtaking reacceleration, but also the on the demand side for the actual products, not just building, but what we saw with Google Cloud and Azure. Azure growth, 31% versus 30% in December, 29%. Uh, that is a acceleration by definition. The same thing is going on with Google Cloud. We'll wait to see next week from Amazon. But I think the big picture here is the building blocks of AI are coming nicely into place. We're still a year, two, three years out before the applications really take off. But this is, I think, still the first stage of a three to five year bull market that's going to uh, ultimately end in a bubble. Dan, I think I saw you on uh, Bloomberg Television earlier this week after we got the disappointing results from Meta Platforms. You were saying the knives are out between the bulls and the bears. Are we going to be on a continued dispersion between where some companies go with tech like Microsoft and Alphabet and where companies like Meta go with it? <clears throat> yeah, look, but when, I, when you look at Meta, they're spending like 1980s rock stars, but where are they spending on AI? And I think the AI revolution is here. I think Gene, uh, as always, did a phenomenal job summarizing. If you look at these results last night, this was a drop the mic moment for AI from Alphabet, from Microsoft. This 1995 moment is just starting. And that's why I think the bears for tech continue to go in their caves into hibernation mode. We are seeing from both these companies, though, Gene, that uh, they are expecting that they're going to have to continue ramping up spending on this technology. Could that potentially pose a headwind if we continue to see a ramp up in CapEx? Uh, Let's put the CapEx. The simple answer is investors need to get their heads around what this is going to cost for an investment phase. And I agree with Dan, this is the right move to be making these investments. Just to put some quick context on this is Google's CapEx grew 91%. They, their cat, that year over year in the March quarter, the CapEx number was 21% higher than analysts were looking for, for March. And yet the stock is up. And the reason is last quarter, they said three times to expect a significant acceleration CapEx. So they did a good job of explaining to investors. And I think this uh, is the absolute right move for these companies. A question I had for um, for Dan is just uh, ultimately, uh, will Mike will will Apple as they start to talk about their AI initiatives have some moment uh, coming up maybe on May second where they start to talk uh, more about their capex and how do you think investors are going to view that? I look. I think Gene summarizes right now with Apple. Because the AI story is going to be coming to Cupertino, and you know, G and I will both be, you know, focused on WWDC. This is just the next phase now of Cupertino betting on AI, and and that is going to create a ripple effect, where we believe this is a trillion dollars of incremental spend over the next decade. Betting against that, in my opinion. It's like betting against the Knicks in this playoffs. <laughs> Still a ways to go on both those counts, though. But uh, looking ahead to uh, the whatever announcement we get from Apple next week, I mean, we saw the, the disappointment from Meta Platforms. They're focused as well on some of the hardware, the, the Quest device, and what that could mean in terms of applying artificial intelligence into that. How high is the bar for Apple to show that, you know, there's been so much question 
question about whether they're actually implementing AI quickly enough to put it into their uh, Vision Pro product, Dan. I, look, and I, I think actually right now, expectations are very, very low and extremely negative. I think New York City cab drivers bearish in Apple. And, and that's why I'd love to hear Gene's view. My view is in terms of this renaissance of growth, it will be on the horizon. They're good. They're navigating challenges, but as AI is coming to the services as well as iPhone 16, that is not what I view as sort of a small moment. I think this could, could be a big moment. I like to get Gene's thoughts there. Yeah, I'm on the same page. I think investors are largely dismissive of what Apple's going to do in AI. And they've got a uh, just a, a wonderful opportunity ahead of them, specifically related to this agent or personalized AI, or Zuckerberg referred to it on the call as agentic AI. But because of Apple's forward view on privacy, I think that gives them an opportunity to build this next generation of AI uh, agents that basically will get things done for you. We're not going to see that in at WWDC. Agree with Dan, that's going to be a big event. Uh, for AI and Apple, but uh, that'll probably be more related to Siri and some improvements there. But I think this concept of agentic AI and what it can mean for Apple's business longer term is is grossly underappreciated by investors. Speaking with uh, Gene Munster, their deep uh, water asset management managing partner, along with uh, Dan Ives of Wedbush Securities, the senior equity research analyst. In terms of what we saw, guys, from Microsoft and Alphabet, I mean, there's a lot of focus as well on the enterprise customer, the application of this technology in the cloud. Is that where the growth is as opposed to uh, some of these more consumer-facing products, like uh, what you know, what Meta is offering in the metaverse, or perhaps Vision Pro from Apple. I mean, to me, it's all about the enterprise in the near term. This AI revolution is playing out in front of our eyes, and now the second, third, fourth derivatives across software, rest of tech, we're seeing play out. It's of course, it starts with the Godfather of AI, Jensen, Nvidia. But when when Redmond and the Della talks, everyone listens, and that's why I think it was another drop to Mike quarter, not just for Microsoft, but of course, Alphabet now getting in on the AI party. So this sets us up as well for what we're going to get from Amazon next week in terms of their offerings in the cloud, Amazon Web Services. Gene, how high is the bar now for Amazon to deliver the kind of results that we did see from uh, Microsoft and Alphabet last night? It's pretty high. I mean, it's uh, last quarter, they grew their AWS at 13%. That compared to 12% in September. So they saw a slight uptick. Again, we're talking 29, 31% for average uh, for Azure and Google Cloud. So AWS, even though they have leading market share, they've been losing share. They've got to show an acceleration. The street estimates are for 15% growth in AWS. And I think they need to exceed that to uh, kind of comfort investors that AWS has a seat at the table. And the other piece to all this is, of course, Google has what they're doing with Gemini that helps feed GPC, their cloud GCP, and separately, of course, what OpenAI is doing with Azure, all that benefits. But when it comes to AWS, they have a relationship with Anthropic, but they still just don't have that punch when it comes to uh, really integrating AI. And so I think that investors, <laughs> they always scrutinize the AWS number, it's going to be hyper scrutinized next week. And Gene, I'm glad you mentioned uh, Gemini product because uh, there was that stumble uh, over you know how it depicts race of uh, some people. They had to uh, pull back on that. Uh, Dan, did Microsoft get past that? In ter- I'm sorry, did Google get past that in terms of uh, what they're offering on Gemini? Look, black eye moments that they saw, they're past it. And I think this is. The mojo now returning to Google, It's. I think you're really starting to see a new phase in terms of AI, but it comes down to, in this AI party, they're no longer outside in the cold waiting online to get in. They're now in the party with Nadella, Jensen, and NVIDIA. And uh, speaking of Nadella and uh, Microsoft, you recently, Dan, uh, raised your price target on Microsoft to 500. Are you thinking uh, things might need to go up even further after these results? I think it's get out the popcorn moment. This is just getting started. I think a year from now, it's a $4 trillion mark cap. 
Where are you on that, Gene? I mean, the, the growth of these companies has been so staggering. I mean, just in this quarter, they deliver for investors. What's the runway for big tech over the next several years? I think you have to ask yourself the question, do you believe that AI can be transformative and to what level you believe that? And you listen to Dan and I, you can you can sense the optimism we have around this. If, if you have that level of optimism, these companies are going to continue to go higher because they have data, because they have infrastructure. Uh, the small companies aren't going to come out of nowhere. We do private investing and it is really hard to compete with the big dogs. And so... I think despite all the value of the creation over the last decade from some of these big companies, we're going to see a next wave because what's happening in AI puts what happened on mobile, internet, and PC. Those are small um, paradigm shifts relative to what's going on, and these companies have got the pole position. I'm going to close this out with you, Dan. Uh, of course, with this kind of growth, it raises the questions for a lot of critics about whether this technology is growing too fast, whether it could be dangerous. Your thoughts on that? Look, I mean, I think even to 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 really show how strong this technology is, you see it last night. The technology is going 95 miles an hour left lane of Ferrari. The regulatory is in a beat-up minivan going 45 miles an hour in a right lane with no radio. The point is that it's going to be an issue, but it is not stopping this freight train. And, and that's something that's going to be more self-regulation. But to me, it's all about the growth. And, that, and I think when you look at last night, it was a drop-the-mic moment for tech. And we are seeing that certainly reflected in the price action this morning. Both companies leading tech shares as a whole higher with uh, Microsoft leading the way. I'm sorry, with uh, Google parent Alphabet leading the way. A gain of more than 11.5% following results for the uh, Google parent. And Microsoft is higher by nearly 4% as well this morning. Guys, both of you, thank you so much uh, for giving us some insights on these earnings. Dan Ives. Senior Equity Research Analyst at Webbush Securities, along with Gene Munster, Managing Partner at Deepwater Asset Management.